So we got two new faces arriving at Milan and two familiar faces have been told, you're free to go. And it does look like Milan might be on the verge of completing their third signing of this Mercato over the 20 million mark in Tijani Reinders. As the player was seen training away from the first team squad and missed AZ Alkmaar's friendly match at home. As the team seemed to be making sure that the midfielder doesn't get injured before his move to Milan. And from the looks of it, it's goodbye Charles de Ketlar and goodbye Alexis Salamakers. There's one thing for sure about this new Milan manager there's a degree of ruthlessness to them and they seem unafraid to make some big decisions. And these are some of the profiles we're going to be looking at in today's episode of Rumor or Real. So Christian Pulisic landed in Milan today in a deal that's going to cost Milan around 23 million. The player is going to sign a four-year contract with a salary of 4 million net per season. And boldly, Pulisic has gone ahead and chosen the number 11 shirt, most recently worn by Zlatan Ibrahimovic. That's something that he's going to actually have to channel in. He has to be that enforcer on the field. We're not expecting him to be like Ibrahimovic, but the important part with Pulisic's deal to Milan is this. He has to take control of matches. He cannot be buoyed down by the fact that he's playing at a big club like AC Milan with a a lot of history. At Chelsea, in the latter stage especially, he was pretty much relegated to the bench. The moment cannot be too big for him, but the fact that he's played at Borussia Dortmund in big matches, he's won a Champions League with Chelsea, I feel like he should relatively fit in here pretty well. Now, there are some obvious debates amongst the Milan fan base as to what's the purpose of this move. There are some fans that are saying that it's just about the fact that he's an American player with the new American ownership, that's why he was signed. On the other side, there are question marks about where exactly is Pilis going to play at Milan. In my opinion, Looking at this particular move, I think this is a pretty good signing for the Rossoneri. If playing with full fitness and in good form, I think Pulisic is an upgrade on Brian Diaz. And on the field, I think this player can offer a lot of versatility and attack. And off the field, in terms of marketability, I think there's no doubt about the fact that Pulisic is far more marketable than Brian Diaz ever was. In this guy's case, we have an entire country backing him up. Every single major news media channel in the US is gonna be talking about this player and inadvertently talking about Milan as well. So in terms of its global reach, I think this is a great move. And I think some of the fans are still suffering from the hangover of the Maldini firing and the sale of Sandro Tonali, which is why they're looking at these moves from a very negative perspective. But if I look at it on a practical manner, I think on the field, this has solid potential. He's won a bunch of trophies, led a country and off the field that has its benefits as well. And I think my biggest concern after the sale of Sandro Tonali was not necessarily the player that we lost. My biggest concern was the precedent that it's going to set for the future. Are we setting a precedent where we just sell players and we just kind of pay off our debts and hold on to the cash? Or are we going to actually put it back into the transfer window? And from the look of it, guys, at this point in time, if Tajani Reinders move is completed at Milan, we've signed three players in the 20 million mark and plus. So that one fear that I had about this management after the Tonali sale, and that's exactly what I said in the video. And I think it all boils down to this. What does Milan do with the funds? For now, I'm stunned. I'm unhappy. I'm pretty pissed off at the ownership group for the sale, but I'm also going to hold on to my judgment for the next couple months because if this money is spent wisely, I don't know if we can continue to complain about this move in the long term. I think we're forced to look at the management and say, hey, we can tell you're not trying to pinch money. You are investing it back into the Mercato. Now, what comes from those sales, only time can tell. And this is not some change of tone on my part. When we signed CDK, I specifically asked the fans, please be patient with him. Give the guy time if he performs poorly in the first 10 games, don't get tough on him. And I'll make the same request for these players. We have to wait and see what happens. Which brings us to our first rumor reel profile, which is of Charles de Ketelar and his possible departure from Milan. News started to break with multiple reports coming out that Milan is ready to offload Charles de Ketelar. That tells me one thing most importantly, this sanction has to come from the coach. The people that were involved in actually bringing him into the club, they're not here anymore. The only person who's had that contact with Charles de Ketelar is Stefano Pioli. And I think Pioli doesn't have any faith in him. So at this point in time, the departure of Charles de Ketelar on the rumor real meter, I think it's I think it's possible. The reason why I say it's possible and not necessarily real as a guarantee is because I don't know how much money Milan can get for the player. I believe the signing that Paolo Maldini made was around that 35 million mark. I don't think Milan's gonna settle for anything less than 25 million. And I think between 20 to 25 million might be the mark where they say, you know what, let's just cut our losses and move on. And that's the reason why I think this departure is possible, but not a guarantee because of the price tag that we might not actually meet. But you guys let me know in the comment section, what do you think? If Milan tomorrow were to get an offer for Charles de Ketlar around that 20, 25 million mark, do you think Milan should sell the player? And the second possible departure from Milan, surprisingly or not, 
Alexis Salamakers have been told by the club, you're free to go. I think the concern about Alexis has been the same from the very beginning. Leao and Salamakers were brought on around the same time. And then slowly on the left flank, the way that Leao just kept growing in quality and Alexis kind of just started to fall off, started to get injured. Basically, Rafael Leao took that leap and Alexis just never did the same. And for that reason, at this point in time, Milan have told him, we're looking to sign a right winger. You're going to have even less play time if you want first team action. This is not the team for you anymore. So on the rumor real meter, the departure of Alexis Alamakers from Milan, I think it's possible as well. I won't call that real either because I don't know what kind of offers Milan's going to get for the player. As a first team player playing in the Champions League or trying to fight for the Serie A title, I don't know if Alexis is our guy, but he can be a pretty reliable and a decent quality backup player. And I quite honestly wouldn't really be too upset if we hold on to him. Which brings us to Tejani Rinders. Now, when Sandro Tonali, as I mentioned in the previous video, when Sandro Tonali was sold and the, the first signing Milan made was Ruben Loftus-Cheek coming to Milan, a lot of people were confused not like for like replacement. I think Tajani Reinders, from his profile, he might be a little bit more in line with what Sandro Tonali is. The player can certainly offer something in attack. He's got a killer foot. He can take long range shots. His passing is good, but he also offers that little bit in defense as well. I don't really think he's quite as versatile as Tonali was on, on both fronts, but I don't think he's a scrub when it comes to the defensive side of play. And at this point in time, from the looks of it, it's going to be a 23 million euro deal, including bonuses. And the player will be paid out around 1.8 million in salary. AZ Alkmaar did not let this player train with the first team. He didn't go for the friendly that they had at home. And that's very likely because they just don't want any injury in the last minute of this deal happening. So to me, to Johnny Reinders, to Milan at this point in time, this is absolutely a real deal. And moving to our right wing, before we talk about Chukwese and Isaksen, we have to talk about Junior Messias. And from the looks of it, just like Alexis Salamakers and CDK, Milan have told Junior Messias that he's free to go as well. For me, this was a pretty decent backup signing. I think he did pretty well at Milan. Just like I mentioned under Matteo Bonetti's tweet, Milan fans have to put respect on this player's name. Don't forget the season where we won the Scudetto. In the 36th match day, he was the one who solidified that win against Verona by making that pass to Florenzi. In the 37th match day, a tricky tied home against Atalanta. Everybody talks about Teo Hernandez's coast-to-coast -coast goal, but a lot of people forget that beautiful cross that he made for Rafael Leao that actually resulted in the first opening goal. This person went from being a food delivery driver to being a Serie A champion in less than eight years, something none of us, not you, not me, will ever be able to say we accomplished. So I think it's high time that a lot of Milan fans give this Serie A champion with our club a lot more respect. And moving on to the deal for Samuel Chuk Ways. So Athletic reported that Milan did make an offer on the 25 million mark for this player, but from the looks of it, Villarreal is not biting on that offer. They want around 35 million for this player. The problem is the player's contract expires next season in 2024. I mean, why would any club be paying 35 million for him for a single year left on his contract? To me, it seems like Villarreal right now are just waiting for the Mercato. See guys, there's still about, what, two months close to left in this market? And Villarreal, for whatever reason, they believe they can get a better offer for this player. And I think it's going to be a possible matter of time kind of deal. The one thing that I do want to point out about this particular new management that we have at Milan, we have to compliment them when I feel like there's a compliment due. I can't just be mad at them for firing Paolo Maldini. I have to look at something and say that I kind of appreciate it. And what I do appreciate is the fact that they're making quicker moves in the Mercato. Over multiple seasons, now even back to the days of Adriano Galliani, a lot of the moves that Milan made were in the latter maybe three weeks of the Mercato because they felt like they could get a deal at that point in time. But a lot of these transactions that Milan has made this time around, they've come pretty early on in the transfer window. And that shows a bit more decisiveness and aggression from the club. So the Chukwese deal at this point in time looks like it might be unlikely, but I don't think this is the end of the story. I think these negotiations are still going to continue and Milan's going to wait to break down Villarreal on coming back to more a realistic number and try and get a deal done for this player. But at this point, doesn't look like Milan is wasting too much time. There are reports that they're already going after their backup profile in Michelin's Gustav Isaksen. Now, it did take me about three takes to get all of those names right. But yeah, Gustav Isaksen of Michelin is the player that Milan is apparently going for. They can possibly get a deal done for this player around that 10 million mark. He's also a right winger profile. The guy apparently had 20 plus goals last season and close to 10 assists as well. So clearly, Clearly, he's a player who can play well in that right wing role, but is that is that form from the Danish league going to translate into Serie A? Obviously, that's going to be a huge ask for the player. But right now, if we look at this particular profile on the rumor of real meter, I think it's probably real. The guy checks off a lot of boxes. 
the reports are suggesting it's goodbye to Alexis, goodbye to Macias. Clearly, we're going to need right wingers. Clearly, we're not just going to need one right winger. We're going to need a backup player as well. And if Chukwueze is possibly the number one profile, I can completely understand Gustav Isaksen being the backup player or maybe even potentially the first option that Milan rolls the dice on. So Isaksen to Milan, based on the reports, I think that's absolutely real. But the only question is, is he our number one option or is this a backup signing? And you guys let me know in the comment section, if Gustav Isaksen comes to Milan, do you think Milan should still be signing a higher quality right winger as well? Or do you think this player along with maybe Alexis Salamakers will do the job? Well, there you have it, guys. These are some of the profiles we want to take a look at today. Now, it has to be pointed out, as I said in the beginning of the video, once Sandro Tonali was sold, the biggest concern to a lot of Milan fans, and I saw it in my comment section, was, oh, they're just going to take these funds and they're going to pay, pay their debts. Oh, Jedi Cardinal is going to take these funds and he's going to stuff them in his pockets. That's not exactly how football works, guys. That would be technically embezzlement. But the biggest concern to me was, are the club just going to hold on to this cash, pay off some bills or store it for the stadium construction? Or are they going to actually reinvest it back into the Mercato? From the looks of it right now, it's very, very clear we're spending and we might actually be spending more than any other club in Serie A right now. So that particular concern for me, I think I feel a lot better on. And if these profiles can be signed, Ruben Loftus-Cheek, Christian Pulisic, Tijani Reinders, Chukwueze, Isaksen. Guys, I think suddenly the Sandro Tonali deal, it seems like maybe it did fund our market a lot better. And maybe, just maybe, we'll find out once the season starts might have been a pretty good move. Now, you guys let me know in the comment section, how are you guys feeling about Milan's spending habits? Do you feel any more confidence in Redbird or do you still want Cardinale out? And as always, Forza Milan, grazie mille e ciao tutti.